I recently learned this strategy that a lot of successful people use to achieve their goals. If you're anything like me, you think that successful people have some kind of stopwatch, time watch, something. There's no way they have 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, because they achieve so many things in one year. Like when I be hearing about these millionaires and billionaires and just successful people all around, it just seems like they have more time than the people who aren't doing that thing. But in actuality, we know that they don't. So I always wonder how did they do it? And I found this strategy. A lot of you guys may have heard about it on TikTok. Um, it's called the 12 week challenge. And it's basically where instead of looking at an entire year as 12 months, they look at a year as three months, which is 12 weeks. And that's how they achieve a lot more things faster than the common individual that looks at a year for 12 months. I say that to say, here are the show notes. My bad. I was about to completely forget that. <laughs> okay, so I say that to say, if you give yourself a certain amount of time to do something, it's going to take you that amount of time to do something, right? So think about it in perspective of you say it's Saturday or Sunday. And you're like, okay, I'm going to clean my room today, right? So you wake up, you eat, all this other stuff. You keep saying later, 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 I'm going to clean my room, right? Then... You don't clean your room or it takes, you know, you actually do clean your room, but it takes you all day to clean your room. You woke up at 9 a.m. You didn't clean your room until 10 p.m. Took you all them hours to clean your room, right? So you may think it took me so and so amount of hours to clean my room. And that's how long you may think it takes you to clean your room. Now, put it in perspective, if that guy that you like told you that he's coming over in 45 minutes, I bet that room will be clean like this. So I say that to say, sorry if that wasn't the best analogy, but. In my perspective, I feel like it was, right? You give yourself a amount of time to do something. That's how long it's going to take you to do something. So I feel like that's another a big reason why a lot of us don't achieve our goals in one year or it feels just so long to achieve our goals is because we give ourselves 12 months to do something and it just gets drawn out and drawn out. And then also think about it as in the things that come within 12 months. Similar to it's Sunday, you tell yourself you're going to clean your room and let's say 1 p.m. come, 2 p.m. come. You're like, oh, I'll do it later. I, I still have time. But then your friend tells Texas you at 2 30 like oh do you want to go to late brunch why would I miss mimosas of course I'm going to late brunch so then you tell yourself yeah I'm just gonna clean my room when I get back after a couple of mimosas you get home you don't want to clean your room you're tired trust me it happened before and then you end up not cleaning your room that Sunday why because that thing just popped up but why did it pop up because you gave yourself a long time span and things are inevitable to happen similar to a year if you give yourself an entire year to do something I don't know about y'all but I've never had one solid year like I've had some years better than others but I've never had a year where everything just goes exactly how I want it to everything goes on one accord so take that into perspective and take that into mind the longer time you give yourself to do something the more likely it is that things can come and mess up that thing and trust me it's happened to me so many times before and I'm sure it's happened to you right I say that to say if you give yourself 12 weeks, which is three months to do something, the probability that something is going to interfere gets basically cut down so minute. If you give yourself a quarter to do something, right, it's the probability of something happening in three months is less likely than something happening in 12 months. So this is the strategy and essentially how you do it and how you can achieve a one year goal in 12 weeks by just honing in and focusing on a goal and this is how so many successful people achieve so many goals so first and foremost think about what are the goals that you have for this upcoming year now when you are making your goals one thing i've also learned be delusional be delusional do not give yourself that perspective of oh well realistically speaking i want to do this realistically speaking i want to do that realistically speaking if you think about a lot of the goals that you have in life you probably are not in the statistic to get that goal like you're probably not in the conversations of people who achieve those goals so do not be realistic with your goals give yourself the high ultimatum do not give yourself the oh well realistically speaking i want to make this much money or realistically speaking i want to have this amount of followers or whatever because i'm a big advocate of you if you give yourself 
a minimum if you give yourself a, a cap you're never going to rise above that cap so i'm a big advocate of i'm going to strive to get my goal so high that even if i don't necessarily reach the tip tip tippity top of that goal i'm still higher than the average individual that only gave themselves your, their goal this much because if you tell yourself you could only make oh i, I just want to make a thousand dollars extra a month if you don't even get that goal you know you probably gonna make like two hundred dollars extra a month but if you give yourself a goal of, I want to make $20,000 a month. Okay, you might not get to that 20000 but you know what? You might get to 10000 You might even get to 5000 more a month. And that's better than what you're doing now. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Don't shoot the messenger. I say that to say, when you are thinking of these goals, do not think of, I want to learn this. Or I know you want to master something. You want to become great at something. You don't want to start something. You want to complete it, right? So think about goals for the month. I personally recommend to have four because we are breaking this up into four quarters. Now, it's a to each its own on what you want to do. But I say break it up into four, right? What are four major goals that you want to accomplish this year? Now, for the first year, the first quarter, you're going to hone in on one of those goals. You figure out which one you want to prioritize. That is it to each its own. Me personally, also when making my goals and figuring out which are the ones that I want to prioritize. Actually, I, do, I really recommend to make a long list of the goals that you want to achieve. That could be more than four, but then figure out the four you want to prioritize. And that's also a very imperative skill to start honing in on and to start learning what do you want to prioritize because I also realized with a lot of unsuccessful people and I'm not talking about other people I'm also talking about myself I've been unsuccessful with a lot of stuff too um we have too many goals and not just that we look at them all on the same level and so it's kind of like this goal should not be as much of a priority as that goal. That goal should not be as much a priority as this goal. Because if you're looking at them on the same level, you're giving them all the same amount of energy, the same amount of attention. And you're getting this way and put that way and that way. And you wonder why you can't achieve them. So I'm a big advocate of what I've really been doing is figuring out my why. And that probably would be, that would be a whole other video because that would be long. But figuring out why do I want to really achieve this goal? Why is this goal really something important to me contrary to another goal? So even for example, right, on my mood, I'm not a mood board, on my vision board going into 2023, one of the things I had on there was um, to get a new car. I wanted to get a new car. And so when I really broke it down and I really went down to my why, why do you want to get a new car? Because my car is old. Why do you care your car is old? Because I wish it drove better. Why do you want your car to drive better? Because, and I really broke it down. I really realized the whole intent, the whole point of a car is to get me from A to B. There's other things that I want to achieve in life. And I'm kind of like, my car gets me from A to B, the car that I have now. It might not be the newest and the nicest and the flashiest, but it does the job. So even though a goal is to eventually get a new car, that needs to be knocked down on a totem pole because that's not something that's a priority for me right now, right? I know a lot of people, oh, I want to move out of my parents' house. So I want to do this. You're focusing so much moving out of your parents' house and prioritizing that that you're not even prioritizing the money that you could be making or saving living at your parents' house. So now you done moved out of your parents' house or wherever you live in, and now you're struggling to make ends meet, and that's all you're focusing on. So it's very imperative to prioritize your goals. Figure out why is this goal important to you? Do you really want to and need to achieve this goal? Right? And I say that to say when you're making the list. It's not saying every goal has to be a die hard thing. If your goal is to do something, um, I've seen on another girl's video was to, you know, learn a language. If that's something that you want to do, that's what you want to do. But when I and looking at my goals personally, I'm just figuring out how, how do I want to prioritize them? How important are they for me to achieve to get essentially what I want in life and to each its own? I said it to say, like I said, four goals. So for the first year, which is 12 weeks, you're focusing on this goal. So this is your main goal. You're going to break that goal into the smallest pieces possible to figure out what you're going to have to do to get to that goal. So first and foremost, right? So one of my goals is I want to gain 15 pounds. I can use a little bit of weight. I want to gain 15 pounds. What am I going to have to do to get to those 15 pounds? I'm going to have to start eating more calories. I'm going to start have to start eating more protein. And I'm going to have to start working out. 
Okay, so those are the goals that I, those are the, the, the subcategories that I need to achieve to get to my main goal. Okay, so if I need to start working out more, okay, that means I need to figure out a circuit. Monday legs, Tuesday arms, whatever the case may be. Okay, that means I also need to start figuring out a schedule. Am I just going to the gym or do I want to do Pilates? Do I want to do this, right? Start figuring out a schedule for that. Okay, what time am I going to be going to the gym? Okay, do I need to buy any clothing to go to this gym or do I need to buy a water bottle right break it down what are the necessary factors what are some of the things I'm gonna have to take out if I want to start prioritizing a gym some of the things I'm gonna have to take out is drinking as much some of the things I'm gonna have to take out is going out to eat as much okay break it down to the smallest component possible to your starting at number one even if it's you going to the gym okay even when I go to the gym, I don't want to just go to the gym and lollygag. So what do I need to do? This is a personal one. Literally make a schedule of when the days I go to the gym. This is a leg day. Okay, so for first 10 minutes, I'm stretching. For next, I'm doing this machine. For next, I'm doing that machine. I don't know how to use a machine. Go on TikTok. Everybody can find how to use a machine on TikTok. Just figure out the name of the machine. Figure out how to use it, right? So when I go there, I know exactly what I'm doing. Everything is broken down, broken down. To the point, even for myself, I'm on some, I know my body probably going to be sore. So what are some things that I need to do to help my body not be sore as much? I'm getting Epsom salt, so I can soak in that. I'm also getting one of those body roller things. I don't know. I see it on TikTok. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, return it. It's Amazon. But I'm also definitely getting one of those, what's the name, guns, um, workout things that you, I don't know if you guys seen them on TikTok. I don't, I don't know. They're like these little gun things that you like. They basically massage the tissue. I say that to say I'm breaking it down. I'm thinking of the little smallest meticulous things that I may be going through or people may go through when it comes to working out okay let's talk about me focusing on eating more calories okay that means I probably need to start meal prepping okay if I need to start meal prepping I probably need to start creating a list when I go to the grocery store and not just buy anything okay if I need to start creating a list that means for me personally I'm gonna even start when I making a list on that you know, earlier that week of what are the meals that I'm cooking. So when I go to the grocery store, I know exactly what I'm getting. Because me, I go to the grocery store, not getting nothing to cook anything good. The next day I'm on Pinterest, TikTok, looking for recipes and I have half the food. I mean, I have half the, you know, ingredients. I don't have the rest of the half. I just left the grocery store. So that's something that I need to do. Something else, like I said, stop eating out as much, right? Something else I need to do. Make sure I wake up and go to sleep at a certain time so my body is more of regular when it comes to eating. Because sometimes what happens to me, I wake up too late and then I try to consume a certain amount of calories in a day. But then I try to go to sleep at a certain time. It's a whole issue when it comes to increasing my protein. Okay, you need to eat more protein. So let's focus on high protein foods. Okay, what are some um, what are some protein shakes that I could be taking, right? Break it down so much so to figure out how much protein do I need to be eating in a day versus calories, whatever, whatever, whatever. Figure out the habits I'm going to have to start creating on a day-to-day -day basis, on a week-to-week -week basis to implement these things, right? Now, this is a to each its own uh, when it comes to this strategy that I'm going to say. I've seen some people mention it. I've seen some people now. One of the things I'm doing is starting slow. I say that to say I've realized one of the biggest reasons why I don't achieve a lot of my goals is that I start out too hard. Similar to a lot of people, the new year is coming. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm about to start working out every single day. Yeah, I'm about to start drinking a gallon of water every single day. Yeah, I'm about to start reading a book once a week. Like, if you know you don't work out if you know you don't drink water like that you know you haven't read since middle school um just realistically speaking that's probably not gonna happen and it's okay like I'm a bit like one thing I've learned is we overly push ourselves so you're wondering why you can't stick to going to the gym because you literally go on a TikTok girly page who's been going to the gym for four years follow her entire workout the next day you're sore as ever and now your body got to recuperate. So now you missing two, three more days. By the fourth day, you know, you try to go your body a little bit better. You kind of getting into it. You don't miss half the week. So the way I'm looking at it is you're trying to achieve this goal by the end of the year. 
Think about that year in 12 weeks. So if you have an entire year, that means the first week you or the first month, you don't have to start going hard. Like you don't have to start going in the paint. Like the whole thing is supposed to be, in my opinion, a progression. You're going to slowly start implementing these certain things. So even when it comes for me, meal prepping, I'm starting meal prepping for probably three, four days out of probably three three days you ever take out of the week right some people meal prep for the entire seven days i just know personally that's not something that i am doing because it's, it's, it's something that's new to me even going to the gym i'm not you get what i'm saying like i feel like there has to be a slow progression to a certain extent even if it is like you wanted to go to the gym you know however many times a week you do not need to be doing the max weight like you don't need to be going to your literally limit you get what i'm saying like even if it's something and even every time i restart my gym journey one thing i often do is for the work first week or so i literally only go on a treadmill i go on a treadmill for like 35 40 minutes and some people may say that's not really doing nothing it's getting one it's getting my body used to being in motion two is getting my body used to getting up and going to the gym like three it's getting me used to like i said my body working out me used to working out me it's even getting my body used to putting on workout clothes and going to actually work out like get your like there's little components that people don't think that's important that makes the whole thing make sense right and so your body's not used to this your your mind is not used to this so start slowly like don't have the idea that oh i have to start going hard every single day like i'm a big advocate of your day 100 looks better than your day one i always say that but i mean not even but so look at it as the things that you do on day 100 you're not going to expect yourself to do on day one so don't put that pressure on yourself that's like getting mad at a fifth grader because they can't pass a 12th graders class why are you mad at that like but that's what a lot of us do we're in that fifth grade we're in that second grade we're in that you know school or that mindset of like a young child or just being young at doing something and then it's like we get frustrated at ourselves of like oh i can't do this and i can't do that and then we quit that's that's what it ends up we quit so like I said before, it's very imperative to break it down, figure out the daily action steps that you, you're going to need to do. And another thing I think people haven't talked about in many of the videos, I feel like it's also imperative to figure out vices. So vices are basically things that contribute to bad behavior. What are some vices that may come about in achieving this goal? Depending on what your goal is, you may know what some of those things are, whether it's gaining or losing weight, whether it's you becoming a content creator, whatever the case may be, whether it's you starting this business. There's things that you know have kept you back from doing those certain things, whether it's hanging out with certain people, eating certain kind of food, whatever the case may be. And I feel like that's something also important to recognize your vices, the things that aren't good, the things that don't contribute to bad behavior. First and foremost, so when you spot them, it's easier to stop them, but also in a sense of it's easier to take them away and kind of have awareness of like, oh, wait, I shouldn't be doing this thing. Oh, wait, I shouldn't be doing that thing. Because I feel like sometimes like bad behavior, it's a lot easier than good behavior, right? Because we're usually more comfortable with it. And so it's like if you're doing something that's contributing to bad behavior, but you haven't to yourself acknowledged that that's a bad behavior thing, that that keeps you back from your goal, then you're probably, in my opinion, more likely to do it. So I feel like that's something also imperative to do. Um, I definitely recommend individuals to use a Notion calendar. That's definitely what I'll be using as far as using a habit tracker, right? Tracking your habits, having a schedule is very imperative with this to have a schedule. Let me tell you now, you're not going to be able to do this by yourself. You're not going to be do going to be able to do this with just setting, you know, mental reminders. Help yourself, help yourself. Do not feel like you have to be alone when doing this thing. You can help yourself by having progress reports with yourself as far as showing your progression, um, as far as keeping a schedule so you remember memorize the daily, not memorize, but are aware of and keeping track of the daily habits. Hey, have I completed this today? Hey, have I completed that today? Sometimes it's even simple. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes I be asking myself. Did I take my vitamins today? Ugh. And I'm looking at the bottle, looking at me, looking at the bottle. I don't know because I'm not keeping track of it. And a lot of times, that's a very small example, but a lot of times that's what happens. Like at the end of the night, you trying to chug down a whole bottle of water because you told yourself you were going to drink a certain amount of water a day. 
But then you just now realize you didn't drink that water. So I say that to say having a habit tracker is very imperative just to keep you aware and to keep you, in my opinion, like, I don't know, sometimes I, to each his own, but I like also seeing that I've been consistent. I feel like it keeps me going. Like if I've seen I've been going to the gym for like 14 days straight and I'm about to miss the 15 day, it's like, dang, I'm really about to break this cycle. I'm really about to... You get what I'm saying? And like I said before, recognize your vices. Recognize things that are holding you back from the things that you want to do. But it's also imperative to give yourself some kinds of some kind of congratulations. Because like I said, think of this 12 weeks as a year. That means you need to congratulate yourself for not like that, but like that, even having these goals and committing to them. But do not have the mindset of, oh, I can't congratulate myself to the end. That's another thing that I think messes up a lot of people because it makes you feel like a tyrant to yourself. It makes you feel like it just I don't know. It makes you personally, in my opinion, not have a good relationship with yourself because it's like if you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you know, you're trying to stick to the goal, or whatever the case may be. Congratulate yourself for that. And I feel like that's another way to build up good congratulations, whether it's you getting yourself a new pair of running shoes, whether it's you, um... I mean, for me, I do little stuff like even I love matchas, but like they can be expensive. So like certain days out of the week, it's like, OK, if you've done everything, you can get a matcha. They'd be, they'd be a little pricey. OK, that's, that's my little congratulations. I say that to say they don't necessarily have to be vices, right? They don't have to be, oh, I got to go out tonight and get drunk with my friends. But figure out ways to congratulate yourself in healthy ways, right? They may be spending a little bit of money and maybe for some people, you know, going like I do little stuff for myself to each his own but like I'll go to a mall like an hour and 30 minutes away probably not gonna get nothing because they don't have nothing at the malls nowadays but I don't know for it's just little it isn't to each his own but for me that's just like a little like just fun little trip like I like doing random stuff like that like I said to each his own but it's also a way of me congratulating myself because I'm not doing this just on a random day oh just a random Tuesday but I kind of do it in a sense of okay if you you know what I'm saying if you're consistent for this entire week hey this is your congratulations for yourself you don't gotta spend a million dollars you don't have to you get what I'm saying do all this crazy stuff but figure out I feel like that's another imperative thing to do make a list of things that you want to do to congratulate yourself because I feel like also if you wait last minute a big thing about this thing is preparing. Preparation, preparation. Um, my freshman year of college, I never forget, one of my professors said, poor preparation leads to poor performance. Preparing all this stuff, preparing the list of the things that you're going to do to congratulate yourself, preparing the list of the habits you're going to do, preparing a schedule so you know, for the most part, what are you going to do when you, by the time you wake up to go to sleep on a day-to-day -day basis, what are you going to do, Right? The more you prepare for these things, the more likely it is that you're going to achieve these things because it's just going to become you going into motion. It's not going to be chaos. It's just you following the little core. But when you don't give yourself these kinds of, you know, preparation and these kind of schedules, then it's like, what do I do today? I don't, I don't remember this. I don't, I don't remember that. Then the next day it's like, oh, dang, I ain't do this today. I ain't do that yesterday. Prepare these things, okay? I say that to say, I feel like this is something that's great. I feel like this is something that can help a lot of individuals as far as achieving a lot of goals. Because if you think about it, if you focus on these things, it may sound like, oh, I'm only achieving four goals or five, depending on how you do it. But it's you achieving four major goals. And one thing also is imperative to stick to the goal that you want to, you say you're you're gonna give do not feel like oh yeah i've been doing this for well i've been doing this for two months i only got one month left i might as well introduce a new goal no that's another thing that messes up a lot of individuals is that and i do it too i if something starts going good for a certain amount of time i think that thing is normal to me like i'll start going to the gym for two weeks and i'm like Yo, i'm i'm a gym girly like i'm a gym rat like well let's introduce this new goal you want to start that business start that business and then now i'm trying to focus on starting that business i thought i was a gym rat but i'm really not so now i'm trying to focus on going to the gym too much and that's another thing that unsuccessful people don't do because they're very disciplined it's very imperative for you to figure out some kind of discipline where you're like i'm focusing on this goal and once i achieve this goal i go to the next goal but once i achieve this goal once this year is up once this 12 weeks are up then i go to the next goal do not start bringing into goals mixing goals different things like that because i prompt it's probably already happened to a lot of you before you started with one thing and then now you go to another thing and then you say another thing and then and it's always when you thought that one thing was doing good. You thought it was good. You thought it was... No. Complete that for a year. 
right and i know for some people they may say oh that's only four goals in a month i meant four goals in a year 12 month calendar year we're talking about but really think about how, not, not even trying to be funny how many goals did you really complete last year let's just be honest like major goals we're not talking about that little goal where you did that little thing and you how many major goals did you complete last year a lot of people didn't and that's okay it's no shade i don't want nobody to feel like i'm talking about them because i personally didn't either but i feel like sometimes hearing it like when i first heard it i'm like four goals in a year that's nothing but then if you think about it they're four major goals you accomplishing four major things in one year one 12 month calendar year imagine if you consistently keep doing this in two three years two three calendar years 12 months years imagine how much stuff you're gonna complete because imagine compared to the past two three years how much stuff you have not completed and how differently your life would have been if you just completed four to five like i said four but to each his own four major things i don't know think about it i'm gonna be using it um i don't know i'm very excited to do it because i i feel like it's gonna be me it's it's very much so you honing in on your goal you're kind of going like full speed at one goal you're focusing on this thing you achieve one thing you're going to the next and i now i kind of see how successful people do it and they achieve so much is because their brains are not scattered thinking oh i have an entire year to complete all this stuff no you don't have an entire year you have three months and like I said before, be delusional, be unrealistic, whatever the case may be. Do not have the mindset of, oh, I can only do this because this is realistic. Because you're never going to get above that realistic. Give yourself the highest goal. Give yourself what you would essentially achieve in a 12-month calendar year. Like, do not... I And I, uh, I hate the whole when it comes to goals being realistic. Because I feel like there's nothing realistic about achieving your goal. Like... Like, it's nothing real, like, about a lot of these things, it's, it's nothing realistic of that there's somebody who makes billions of dollars a year. So why do you think you have to be realistic and say you could only make 4000 a year? I mean, 4000 a month. When it's somebody out here making 4000 a second. There's nothing unrealistic. And at least get yourself into the healthy habits. At least get yourself in the places and the spaces with individuals who are like-minded as you, doing similar things to you. And how you do that is start developing these habits, getting into these rooms, getting that kind of mindset as these individuals. So that's definitely, like I said, something I'm going to be implementing in this upcoming year. I've heard about it all over TikTok. I've heard it on YouTube. And I'm like, this is something that I feel like definitely could benefit me. And... I feel like it could benefit a lot of other individuals, which is why I created this video. So I will link below this Notion template that you guys can use. Like I said, it's very imperative to um, have these on a schedule. But you can also, if you want, like download like the Habit app or something like that to keep track of the habits and then have your own daily schedule. I just like Notion because everything is there. I can have it on my laptop. I can have it on my phone so it makes it easier for me but like i said it is a to each its own so i hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that you found something helpful useful out of this video hopefully you will use this strategy um i'm a be very big fan of it i feel like it has a lot of potential and if you are going to use it comment below and tell me you know what are some of the goals if you don't want to share the goals you have that's cool too because i know some people you don't want to put it out there but um comment below if you guys will use this that's what i definitely want to know is this something that you guys will use or y'all just feel like this this ain't for y'all but yeah um as always thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like comment and subscribe i know we're still in my grandma house you know what i'm saying we're probably gonna get out here pretty soon i'm back home for the holidays so i know it's a lot going on but um we're making it work we're making it work that's what we do right that's what we do